The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 21st, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. You send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers, Den will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices that we track trading to the upside. Dow's up 118, about four tenths. Four tenths for the S&P, or 15 points. Two tenths for the NASDAQ, 126 points. Six tenths for the Russell, 11 points. One to four tenths for the semis, that's 35 points. Six tenths for the trannies, 84 points. Spot volatility, so it's still above its 50-day exponential moving average, so any surprises, we'll see big rug pulls to the downside inside the ES mini, the S&P 500. Gold is trading out at 1675. That's up four bucks. Silver's up 24 cents. She traded 1942. Like to recruit back a buck and a quarter, trading out at 84.45. Natural gas trading out at 760. That's off six pennies. And a 30 year treasury is up six ticks. 130.15 is its print. So, where do we want to begin? We've got some individual questions that have come in. Maybe we'll take a look at those or we'll get to those during the uh, second segment. Let's start with well, what we're really looking for. I suppose the question that is out there, do we see any tells in the market as to how uh, the market will respond to uh, Chair Powell's decision today at 2 p.m.? So to answer that question, we go take a look at the charts. But first, what we'll do here is let's just step back for a moment and go take a look at some larger time frame charts out there as opposed to just getting caught up into the minutia. We'll do that here momentarily. But here is a chart for what one do I have up? I've got the Dow. So we've got the yearly, the monthly, the weekly, and the daily time frame. And we'll get down in, and we've got it both for the Dow, as well as for the equity future contract out here. Again, if you look at the Dow on a yearly basis, whether it's a future contract or the cash indice, last year was a TD nine count top. So no wonder that we've had the market move lower. As we look at the monthly time frame chart, this confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, even though it has done that, Really, the pullback has been pretty mild. When I say pretty mild, the breakout level, the normal area where price would pull back to when you have a top is support. Well, in this case here on a monthly basis, that's down at 24,843. Nowhere near there. I'm not saying we can't get there. I'm just saying that the move to the downside, even with that TD9 count top, um, even though we're at uh, near where the open was of 2021, still not too shabby out here. As we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly chart for the Dow and for the uh, uh, Dow Equity Future contract both confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottoms. That's at the June lows. Now, price right now, we're trading into those June lows on a weekly basis. I'm not sure if we're back in the swing point on a daily basis or not, but we're certainly trading into the June lows. So the key area here for the Dow, the cash indice on a weekly basis, its key level of support is down at the uh, 30, I'm sorry, 29, 653.29. For the Dow Equity Future contract, 
level to be watching there would be 29,740. So you've got weekly bottoming patterns still in effect. Price below red oscillator and change lines would be unusual for price to go retest or take out those lows. We don't know that. The daily time frames have by the D points. Last Friday was a bullish hammer candle. Last Monday or this past Monday was a bullish engulfing candle uh, that confirmed this is on the uh, Dow cash indice out there. You know, a double confirmation of an A to B equal CD to the downside. So the daily and the weekly have bottom signals. Let's switch panels. Go take a look at the S&P 500. We'll look at the S&P 500 as well as the ES Mini, the same uh, set uh, that, or just the same routine that we just did. Here, we'll just cut to the chase. On the weekly charts for the S&P and for the ES Mini, they both have roads meant to indicator bottoms. Yes, price is below those red oscillator change lines. means we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish conditions, but we also have bullish signals out there. The daily time frames, each of them have buy the D point patterns. Those are the hammer candles that had formed last Friday. On a monthly basis, the S&P 500 shows the TD9 count top and the typical move back to support the breakout area. And in the case of the S&P 500, that was at 37.23.34. That's exactly where price got down to, tested and rejected it. For the ES Mini, it was 39.69.50. Now, if those levels fail, which would mean, in essence, uh, well, if those levels fail, then you go down to the next level. For the S&P, that next level would be 29.65. For the ES Mini, that would be at 28.81. So weekly and daily have bottom patterns. Now let's go switch over and take a look at those intraday time periods out here. Again, what we're looking for are just some kind of signals. Is the market giving you and I signals as to how it's going to respond? So we're looking for those tells. Uh, we're going to change screens here momentarily. We'll get over to the uh, white background, the eight panel screen. So we already covered the daily. It's got that by the D point pattern. Now, if we get a close below that hammer candle, that sets up a larger A to B equal C D to the downside. Although it's not shown here at the moment, what I can share with you is that one-to-one -one price projection, if 3846.25 fails to hold as support, then you're looking to move to 3729 or 3608. The five-hour time frame chart has a roads bit to indicator bottom pattern. That uh, confirmed last night as the uh, equity future contracts came to a close. Price ran up right into resistance. If you're wondering why did price stop where it did, it's because it has resistance at its bearish structured day, uh, profile for its five hour time frame chart that's up at 38.99. The four hour chart also has a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. It too is a slightly bearish structured profile. Resistance there also at 38.99. The two-hour time frame chart also has a roads momentum indicator bottom. Price got near but didn't get all the way up to the top of its profile. It's not bearish in structure. Still, that's where sellers reside at 39.09. So here's the key. If price is able to close above those profiles after chair of Powell's really going into the close because it'd be a five-hour chart, so at 5 o'clock this evening, if price is above that, that suggests we are headed higher. Whereas if price closes below, this is the ES mini we're talking about, close below 3846.25, that then is suggesting a larger A to B equals CD to the downside, again, 3729 being the first likely target. Now, even though we've got all, and we haven't even looked at the 60 minute time frame chart, bottom pattern out here, uh, 30 minute chart, bottom pattern. In fact, it negated a TD9 count top. Right now, price is pulling back and testing its green oscillator and change line after changing colors. That's a bullish signal. So the ES Mini is generating all kinds of, if we're looking for a market tell, the ES Mini charts are saying it's going to rally. Doesn't mean it will. Why wouldn't it, Steve-O? Great question. We'll answer that as soon as we get back to the screen. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the question was, as we went into the break, uh, if the ES Mini and all of its time frames, multi time frames that we looked at, they're all bullish out there. They're all suggesting that the tell is that the way that the market's going to respond to whatever Fed Chair Powell comes out with is a rally. But what is it that could get in the way? Well, there's really a couple things that could get in the way. First of all, here we take a look at the uh, TAS market breadth. That's in the upper right-hand corner. It is bearish for the weekly. It is bearish for the daily. The 240 looks like it's just on the precipice right now. Let's take a look at the 240-minute time frame chart. What we have is uh, 155 instruments trading above profile for the uh, four hours and 173 below. So it still has that bearish crossover. It's because of this negative market breadth. So it's not that the negative market breadth can't be overcome. It's just that it hasn't at this stage, and therefore it's not really supporting uh, the idea that there is some type of breakout or rally. So what this is telling us is even though the ES Mini's intention is to rally, it's going to be a choppy marketplace. If we take a look at the NDX 100, perhaps that's even more important. Uh, here you've got uh, really the same type of setup. Uh, daily, weekly, and the 240 are all bearish out there. The 60-minute has gotten slightly bullish. So that's the first issue. The second issue is really the sectors with inside the S&P 500. Even though we've got bottom signals for the cash industry and for the equity future contract, as we take a look at where TAS market breadth is for the daily time frame for the different sectors that make it up, it's quite frankly horrible out here. So that, too, says a caution, even though the message is from the intraday charts or the tell, so to speak, is that the market wants to rally. It should be very choppy out there based upon the TAS market breadth. If we look at the S&P sectors themselves, so let's do this here, and then we'll get to the questions. So let's look at the S&P sectors. Give me a moment here. Uh, let's switch panels. Let's go to the top sectors or the S the, the SPY as well as the top sectors. And then we can come back and take a look at the other uh, eight instruments out here. Screens, there we go. So as we take a look at the SPY, whereas I could draw in an A to B equals CD to the downside for the S&P cash and for the ES mini because of the hammer candle that formed last Friday, cannot do that with the SPY. Does that mean that we don't have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the uh, downside? No, it does not. 
I would prefer to use my signals coming from the ES Mini, the equity future contracts, because we have more data to utilize. But I cannot generate that same signal, that same buy the T point confirmation from the SPY. I cannot generate that same signal for the XLK. The XLK negated its buy the D point in TD9 count pattern when price closed below the hammer candle from back on September the uh, 1st out there. Uh, also, the September 7th. Uh, so price is below that area. There's no bullish reversal candle. So this, it does cause me concern for sure. Top sector, I can't get that same buy the D point pattern. How about the second sector out there, the XLV? Now, the XLV does still have its original buy the D point and TD9 count bottom that formed back at the uh, September 1st time frame out there. So that still is in place out here. There was a bullish hammer candle inside the XLV on Monday out there. So that's just reconfirming it. So the healthcare sector, if you're going to be long, the, uh, the S&P 500, the healthcare sector here looks pretty good. Now, I say it looks pretty good. It's consolidated with inside its daily profile. It's below its red oscillator and change line. So it's not like it's giving us a full breakout message. Now, why don't I have profile levels on the XLF? Good question. Let me uh, just uh, load the template that will get that there all daily. There we go. And so now in the XLF, the XLF still has its TD9 count bottom. So here's another sector. So the sectors that are strong so far with inside the uh, S&P 500, not technology, but you've got the valid bottom inside the XLV. You also have that inside the XLF. Both of them are trading with inside their profiles. Both have resistance up at their oscillator and change lines. Now let's go take a look at the other sectors of the S&P 500. See what they're communicating to you and I at 11.22 in the after, 11.22 in the morning. We go take a look at the consumer staples, XLP. XLP, there's a small A to B equals CD to the downside. It's probably a 1 to 1.2618. Today is a gap to the upside. So I can justify, justify, I can find, I can locate a confirmed bottom pattern out there. If, in fact, the uh, ES Mini and the S&P bust through the hammer candles from last Friday, then the XLP is going to go target the larger A to B equals CD to the downside in the 69 area. If I take a look at the industrial sector out here, it still has a ways to go before it completes its larger A to B equals CD to the downside. There is a gap to the upside. That would confirm the smaller A to B equals CD pattern. The communication sector, nada, zip, zip. Zilch. This is not a sector to be involved with, at least not as of 11.23 in the uh, morning out here. There is no bottom signal. Inside the XLY, it's got a nice TD9 count bottom. So the XLY, XLF, XLB, those will be the three sectors right now that have got nice bottoming patterns out there. We don't even have a bottoming pattern inside the XLE. Why does it not have its profile? So I'm going to go back, sorry about that, and add the profile levels to each of these. I'm not sure why they're off. But they're not here. That's okay. We're just looking at the pattern. So back to the XLE. I don't have a uh, bottoming signal or pattern as we speak. With regard to the real estate sector, uh, it's already inside its larger A to B equal C D to the downside. It needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. The material sector, XLB, no bottom signal here. Well, I take that back. It's got the smaller A to B equal C D that was confirmed on Monday when it generated that bullish engulfing candle out there. And the uh, last one is the utility sector. Roads momentum indicator top, wave number seven top, price finding support yesterday at its breakout level of 73.53. Is that a bottoming pattern out there? It can be. Pulling back to breakout support can be a bottoming signal out there. So overall, when we took a look at the uh, intraday charts, took a look at the daily and weekly charts for the S&P 500, there is no doubt that the signal they are suggesting is that the market wants to rally. But when we start to dig underneath the details out there, take a look at the sectors, for example, with inside the S&P 500 or the market breadth, we don't get that same confirmed message out there. So we don't have a clear message. We don't have a clear message in my opinion. So now let's go start taking a look at some of the requests that have come in. A couple were from uh, yesterday out there. Uh, the first one was from uh, Mike in Poland. There were a couple of instruments that we did not get to. One was Dan. I believe it was Dan. Uh, and so let's see if we get Dan the stock symbol to pull up on our screen and uh, try to figure out what it is and what it's doing. That is Dana Incorporated. Dana Incorporated right now is trading out at 1398. That is below the bottom of its daily profile. So that's a, a bearish message out here. There is an A to B equal C to the downside. Even if that completed, which I believe that it did with the hammer candle on September the 8th out there, yesterday price negated that by closing below the hammer candle. So that says lower price, Mike. 
lower price to wear. I'll just simply go to the weekly uh, set of charts out there and notice that price is trading into a bullish structured weekly profile with price below its red oscillator and change line with the uh, daily time frame signal having failed. I would say 1354 is the likely price target area. It may head lower than that. Why? Because on a monthly basis, what uh, Dana Incorporated has done is it negated its TD9 count bottom pattern. It did that a couple of months ago. Uh, back in uh, June out there. Um, so that could be suggesting longer term that what Dana wants to do is head lower. You also want to take a look at Qualcomm. I think we might have gotten to that briefly, but let's just go ahead and put up those charts for you. As we go into break, let's see if we get this thing here populated. I've got a number of different uh, workshop worksheets that are open, so it's going to take a little bit longer than normal. In the case of Qualcomm, you've got a nice wave number seven bottom. Our price has got resistance at 128.63. You clear 128.63, price is headed to 133 and change out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Right now, you got the Dow uh, trading out at uh, 3830, 3840. That's up 134, about four tenths, uh, five, uh, half a percent for the S&P, uh, nearly 19 points to the upside. We're going to change and take a look at the uh, euro out here. This is for um, Mike in Portugal uh, from an email from yesterday and uh, Peter in Park City out here. So as we take a look at the uh, euro, and Mike's comment was, looks like the euro is getting ready to crater. Uh, maybe that's going to uh, send capital uh, flowing from Europe into the U.S., which will most likely then support the U.S. stock market. 
And I agree with that. The euro is already cratered out there, so we're waiting for that really to take hold. And to a certain extent, it already has taken hold. And what I mean by that is if we were to take a look at the Dow price and the other major currencies, the retracement's not any. We're right now, as we mentioned, when we took a look at the weekly chart out there, monthly chart, we're back at the June lows. We're nowhere near June lows for the Dow price and those other major currencies out there. But sticking with the euro, um, and on a monthly basis, price is below breakout levels. It's below the 2017 area. In fact, if we pull this back further, what we will see out here is that the uh, euro is likely headed for the 2000 lows, maybe even below that. That's around the 83, 82 area out there. So that is where it is targeted. Now, a couple different patterns. You can take a look at large A to B equals CD downside patterns out here. We can most certainly do that. You've even got the uh, consolidation breakout. That's one that I'll go ahead and drop on our screen here first. We'll do that just simply by getting our rectangular tool out. So the consolidation pattern would look something like this out here. And all we have to do now is uh, take that consolidation. Once you break a consolidation, it provides us with a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation. When we do that, this gets us down to 0.83. So whether I draw in an A to B equals CD, we take a look at consolidation breakout, we take a look at if there are any floors now on a monthly basis that the euro is trading into, the answer is not. There could be a little bit of support at 93 out here, 93, maybe 95. Those would be the last areas where there might be a bastion of support here for the euro. We take a look at the long-term charts, but the euro is most certainly cratering and over time likely headed to 80. Maybe it's just simply the euro itself is going away. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, there's no bottoming signal here. Price is below red oscillator and change line. That's a bearish condition. The daily time frame, says Mike and uh, Peter, is that things don't really get moving to the downside until the euro takes out it's Rhodes Mintum Indicator Bottom. And that was formed out here. That was confirmed on September 7th. The price was moving lower, to that was really confirmed on uh, September 5th with a bullish hammer candle. Uh, that was tested the following day. Uh, then you had a bullish engulfing candle. So it's really going to be the low of those, those three candles out here. And that means that is at the 0 0.9864. 0 0.9864. If price closes below 0.9864, the Rhodes Mintum indicator signals will be negated. There will be no other bottoming signal that Stevie has, at least daily, weekly, or monthly out here. And that would suggest that then an inno visual inside the Tiger's Den said the dollar looked pretty interesting. Well, we know that the euro represents about 57% of the U.S. dollar index, you know. And uh, we know that the U.S. dollar index was testing the top of its weekly profile. In fact, we can go take a look at the bigger picture here for the U.S. dollar index. Let's go take a look at it. Don't mean to be jumping around. I don't think I'm jumping around, but if I am, I apologize. Uh, we have to change screens here. So, Mr. Bill, just give me a moment. We'll get that over. I know you're getting ready to tell me, hey, Steve, you're on the wrong screen. So now here is the uh, daily, weekly, monthly set of time frames for the, uh, for the U.S. dollar index. It's above the top of its daily profile. Uh, that's up at the uh, one 0990 level. It's above the weekly profile. It's above the monthly profile. You can see the larger A to B equals CD patterns that we have both for the monthly and for the quarterly time frame. The U.S. dollar index is headed higher. At least that's its signal as we speak right now. Now, maybe by day's end, price pulls back inside the daily profile at 110.31. And if it closes below that, gets back inside there, then um, okay, we don't have a clear breakout. You still have resistance there. But you get a close above the top of that profile. The signal is that the U.S. dollar index wants to move higher. Again, you could just look at the euro, the pound, the yen out there, see what signals they're providing. The pound, as I recall, is not looking that uh, great. But I have to go back and look at the charts there. But so that's the euro. For Mike in Portugal, Peter in Park City, and uh, for, the, uh, for InnoVisual, that is the U.S. dollar index. Now, U.S. dollar index moving higher. Somebody might say, oh, man, that is really not going to be good for Goldilocks out there. And Stevie would say, not so fast. Why would he say not so fast? Well, you've got gold. Gold is basically flat today in terms of U.S. dollars. Moving higher in terms of euros, higher in terms of yen, higher in terms of pounds out here. So if at day's end you get a bit of a rally inside of gold out there, if you get a bullish reversal candle today, you'll have a confirmed by the D point pattern. So it's important to take a look at how these instruments are trading inside those major currencies. What are our brothers and sisters in those countries that have as their local currency, either yen, pounds or euros, doing? 
In fact, we can uh, continue that. I made mention of, hey, you know, it's really not so bad with regard to how the Dow is performing in terms of those other currencies. Here's the chart right now. So you can see that in terms of the Dow in dollars, we're back towards that June swing point. Now, this is a daily time frame. We know we're trading inside the weekly swing point of June. We're getting close to the daily swing point of June. Uh, so that's a 100% move of a move coming back there. But if you take a look at the Dow price in euros, has not even made the 0.618 retracement of that last move from low to high. In terms of yen, didn't even make the 0.382 retracement. In terms of pounds, it just made the 0.382 retracement. Those are just natural dead cat um, moves. So the Dow is very strong in terms of yen and pounds. And that's the reason that uh, Mike said, hey, take a look at the euro. Looks like it's getting ready to crater. I agree with you there. I think it's been cratering. And the question is, when does the, uh, when does the uh, global flow of capital really take hold? And I don't know the answer to that question. I do know this, that we typically see bottoms inside the stock market around three different time frames, the end of January, the end of June, and the uh, middle to end of October. Now, those can shift a bit. You got the daily bottom signals. We took a look at the ES Mini, the S&P 500. You've got the weekly signals there. Have they shifted? We take, we're taking right now a look at how the uh, Dow is uh, priced in these other major currencies. So the Dow is holding up well across the globe. It's just not holding up as well here in the U.S., but it will at some point in time. So I hope that helps you out. Let's go to our next question. That was really from uh, Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan wanted to take a look at one of his favorite stocks. That is Cassava Sciences. S-A-V-A -A is the uh, ticker symbol. Had a nice move yesterday. Big, wide-ranging bar. Has a nice A to B equals CD to the upside. That A to B equals CD to the upside, the one-to-one -one would take us into the 44.50-ish type area. Price yesterday closed above the top of its profile, Dan, at 34.46. It is above the top of its weekly profile, where it ran into resistance today, Danny. You don't see Saba? Stevie didn't do that? Thank you, Mr. Bill. you got to have a wingman, many of them. So thank you for letting me know that Stevie was on the wrong charts. Here we go. So... Now back to uh, Saba. What we've got out there, you can see I've just drawn in the C to D leg. I drew in the A to B and I've just simply moved it over to C to D leg. That's how we get to approximately the 4450-ish area. Here's the profile at 3446, that price closed above. So it suggests that it at least wants to, to pick that out. Now there's breakdown resistance on a daily basis at 4282. So there's resistance there. Why did price stop where it did today, Danny? I would venture to say that it's the sellers that are at the uh, center of its uh, bullish structured monthly profile. There's both buyers and sellers there. And that's at the $41 even Steven number. You got up to 41 and a quarter. Now, if price can clear 41 and a quarter, the next resistance level on a monthly time frame would take you up to 66.29. But of course, you're not going to get to 66.29 until buyers take out the sellers that reside at 42.82. So, where is it that Saba is headed to? 42.82 if it can clear 41 bucks even Steven. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we're looking at the 30-year uh, Treasury uh, charts out here. G-Man inside the Tiger Sense. Can we take a look at the TLT? I'm looking to buy some uh, puts out here. So as we take a look at the TLT, what we've got is um, go back and take a look at the uh, daily time frame. I'm not going to. No, but no, I don't. I don't need to. So in the daily time frame, we've got no bottom signal out here. Price took out the uh, prior swing point from back in uh, June out there, so that's suggesting lower price. You're below the weekly profile. There's A to B equals CD. Price has made the one to one level. If at week's end, price closes below the candle session from June 13th. June 13th was a hammer candle that confirmed the buy the D point pattern. That low is at 138.18. Your 129.31. If you close below that low, that buy pattern will have failed and it will suggest lower price. The next downside price objective would be 121 and change out there. If we take a look at the 30 treasury on a monthly time frame, again, there's a hammer candle here. If you close below this at the end of September, this being 130.18, that suggests lower price out there and you're below the bottom of the quarterly profile. So all that supports price headed lower. The caveat or the question is, will price take out that weekly hammer from from June 13th. I do not know the answer to that, but that's the only thing that says careful Will Robinson. As we take a look at the intraday set of charts out here for the 30 year treasury, you can see that you've got a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on the five hour time frame chart. A uh, price needs to take out the top of the profile um, uh, and uh, in order to signal otherwise. You've got a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on the four hour time frame chart. This might signal a move up to 132.05. If price could close above that, there might be something to its rally out there. As I look at the other intraday time periods, the only thing that I really see is price pulling back to test a breakout support on the 15 minute and on the 30 minute basis. Those are right at around 129.30 and 130 even out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at the 30 year treasury. It does suggest it wants to move lower. Uh, but you do have those uh, bottoming signals on some of the intraday charts that do suggest you could see a bit of a rally out there. So I do hope that helps you out, uh, G-Man. We've got a request to take a look at, uh, well, Alton uh, wrote in, and what Alton wanted to take a look at, his question was, what is the best, he wants to take a long position in the mining equities out there. And his question was, which one looks the best? Well, Alton, there's a ton of mining stocks that make up the GDX. So I'd have to uh, go through the, uh, you know, probably spend a full hour 
uh, trying to do that. But let's just try to give you a quick rundown of some of the stocks. See if there's anything out here that sticks out to uh, you or I. You've got Newmont Mining. That's in the upper left. That's the number one weighted stock. It's got a nice Rosemont indicator bottom. The price might be pulling back to the bottom of its profile, right around 41, uh, 12, 40, 70 to 41, uh, 12 out there because uh, – uh, because price is below the center of its bearish structured daily profile. No breakout there. Uh, Rand Gold has got a nice rose momentum indicator bottom. Price might find support between 1470 and 1487. Uh, no bottom signal on Franco Nevada. Perhaps that's what the GDX is waiting for, is Franco Nevada to um, chip in here. Uh, AEM looks like Ignico Eagle pulled back to a uh, gap area. Uh, so that breakout level is held. But you're below daily profile. You're below red asset and change. I don't like that so much. So Newmont and, and uh, ticker symbol GOLD are two potential candidates. Another potential candidate is Wheat and Precious Metals, WPM. Do I not have those charts up? I do. Yep, okay. Um, AU, Anglo Ashante, that's got a possibility. But none of these are giving us really full breakout message out here. Royal Gold, RGLD, uh, that looks pretty decent with resistance up at about 95, 85. Um, so, again, I'd have to go through everything, Alton. There's not anything. These are the top eight stocks. There's not anything out here that sticks out as being have the second half of GDX component charts. I do. I don't have Newmont Mining. Oh, sorry about that. I put up the uh, the other charts. Thank, thank you, Bill. Very helpful. Thought I tagged the right thing. Let's try this again. There we go. Now you should have Newmont Mining. Okay, so now we we're taking. I was taking a look at the top eight. You were taking a look at the bottom eight, so to speak, out there. So sorry about that. But again, here as you take a look at these, it's Newmont Mining that's got a decent signal. Gold has a decent signal. Wheat, precious, wheat and precious metals and ticker symbol AU, Anglo Ashante. Even, even Royal Gold, it's got potential. There's no doubt it's got potential. The issue with regard to the GDX is this. Let's go switch back, or I think that this is the issue. So let's go switch back to this screen, and let's go switch back to our daily, weekly, monthly set of charts out there, and let's go ahead and put in the GDX for Alton. So let's get the GDX. This will take just a few moments here to populate. What we'll see is that the GDX has a nice road momentum indicator bottom, much like I referred to with regard to Newmont Mining. Price moving lower, doing less relative energy, bullish reversal candles out here. Price below the bottom of its profile, not good. You've got a weekly confirmed road momentum indicator bottom. That was from two weeks ago when you got that nice bullish piercing or bullish engulfing candle out there. What Price has been unable to do out here, Alton, everybody else that's listening, is close above that weekly red oscillator and change line. I believe that that is what's needed out there to get a confirmation that we likely have a change in trend. Now, I say likely because there's a new profile on a weekly basis that is formed inside of the GDX with resistance at 26.66. So uh, you want gold to, uh, in, in effect, give you a bottom. So you need a bullish reversal candle there in a daily time frame to give you a buy the D point pattern. And you'd like to see the GDX trade above, close above. Right now, that level is 24.90. Then we might be onto something out there, Alton. Until then, um, hard to really say. Actually, it's pretty easy to say. It says just really be cautious out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks for writing in. Cause wrote in. Cause wants to take a look at ticker symbol CTRA. So let's get that fired up here. The ticker symbol itself doesn't uh, jog a bell. That doesn't really matter. I just don't know what CTRA is. and It doesn't show up on these white background charts. But I believe that is Coterra Energy trading down at 29 and change right now. That is below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. Um, what do we see? We see a nice uh, nothing. Nada. Zip. Zilch. Uh, there was a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. That confirmed. Well, it was to the upside. Was confirmed with a bearish shooting star on September the 15th. Price may be pulling back to test 27.24 cause. I think you're looking for entry points. That's a TD9 count breakout area. So I look at the daily time frame. The weekly chart has got a TD9 count top. That's suggesting price could pull back to 25.50, 25.65, and 26.86 would be the numbers to look at. Coterra Energy has a monthly TD9 count top. Price above its monthly profile and its green asset and change line. Those conditions are neutral. So you're neutral on the very long term. You're somewhat... Um, 
consolidating on the weekly time frame. So I'd go with, uh, if you're looking for an entry point here, I'd wait for a further pullback. Look at 2686 to 2724. Cause also wanted to look at Devon Energy. DVN is the ticker symbol here. So let's get these charts populated. See if there's any additional message here or different message when we take a look at DVN. Um, come on, go ahead, populate out there. DVN trading out at about 65.69. Uh, also, just like uh, CTRA, trading below the bottom of its daily profile. This could be an A to B equals CD to the downside. Um, I say could be, but I need to go take a look at the. I'll tell you what. I'll take a look at Devon Energy during this breakout there. See if there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. Even if there is, price must close below the top of that weekly profile, which is 6413. See both the TF. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. Uh, so during that break, we took a look at the, or I went ahead and drew in the A to B equals C to D, or drew in the A to B and C to D lines out there. And you can see Devon Energy chart on the left-hand side, daily time frame. Did complete the one-to-one -one price projection move. But what it's lacking right now is a bullish reversal candle. So if you were to get that cause, that would give you a buy signal into Devon Energy. You'd especially like to see that while on the weekly time frame, price has held the top of its weekly profile. That was at 64.13 number that I had mentioned. So you really would like to see that bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. When we look at a 30 minute time frame out here, cause what you received here was a Rosemont indicator bottom, 
That bullish hammer candle had formed at 1030 morning back on September the 20th. That was yesterday. That then led to a TD nine count top. Bar number eight identified the top. That was this morning at 10 o'clock. Prices pulled back, but it found support at the uh, center of its profile. That's at 6505. So this looks like it's really, so if it can close above 6586, it's gonna take a run for that TD nine count top. And that's up at the 6694 level. If price can close above that, Dev and Energy wants to make move to 7002. But wait, Stevie, you said, hey, cause should wait for a bullish reversal candle uh, in the daily time frame. And that is still my conclusion. And it's especially my conclusion because price is also below the bottom of its daily profile, which is at 66.82. So cause, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request out there. And it looks like we got to everybody's request. That's a beautiful thing when that unfolds out there. So that takes us back. Let's go put up the ES mini charts as we go into the uh, close of the show out here. Let's get those populated again. Let's just remind ourselves of where we're at. And where we're at on a daily time frame, a confirmed by the D point pattern. That does suggest a move up to at least 39.50. That is its red oscillator and change line. Confirmed uh, roads meant to indicator bottom signals for the four and five hour charts. They suggest a close above 3,900 would lead to a further rally. Let's use 3,909 and the further rally would be 39.77. Above that, well, then we'd be looking at probably about 4,000 or so out there. But we don't have as I look at these intraday charts, really, for the most part, well, I've got a wave seven on the 10-minute uh, chart out there. But the tell is right now that markets want to trade higher. The problem is market. Folks, stay tuned for great programming. I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. You have a wonderful Wednesday. Take care.